first thing, this uh, presentation is on sugar and sweets. Um, and that's really one of the big topics that um, we, we need to explore and spend some time on. Um, so who here has a sweet tooth? I kind of do a little bit. I do, for sure. Yeah. I love them. Mm, I don't know those. Are they good? Yeah. Uh -oh. I don't need to. I probably don't need to add anything new. <laughs> so, Reese Thins. I like just um, chocolate pretty much uh, <laughs> and <laughs> breakfast type sweets. What about you, Missy? What's like your favorite? Um, yeah, I am a huge sweet tooth. So, like, I like all of it, but I love chocolate. I love ice cream, it's really my favorite. And then, yeah, breakfast, like cinnamon rolls, those are my weakness for sure. Yeah, now that we're all hungry for some sweets, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about how we don't, why we don't want them. <laughs> so most people don't know that they're addicted to sugar. Um, and most of the time they're surprised to find out how much they actually end up consuming on a regular basis. Um, some of the fun little facts about sugar is that like it's been shown that it's eight times more addicting than cocaine. Um, and people are just kind of shocked to find that out, but it's really true. And I, like, I, I mean, I, I don't wanna say it's really true. Like, obviously that's kind of a subjective thing to measure, but I see that play out when I work with people um, because, it, and in, in my own life even, and, and in my husband's life, because he definitely is a sugar addict, um, but it hits the same trigger points in the brain and you can crave it and, and uh, it's really tough. Four grams of sugar is what's in one teaspoon of, of sugar. And then in a 20 ounce regular soda, on average, there is 64 grams of sugar. So that's kind of a lot. So anytime I see people drinking soda, um, this past weekend I was home and my sister went through like three regular Mountain Dews one morning. And I'm just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so um, there's just so much sugar in in soda and it's doing nothing nothing beneficial for us and it's actually hurting us so um the the american heart association recommends that we keep our sugar intake for women to 25 grams of added sugar per day um or less and for men to be 36 grams a day or less of added sugar um those are if you eat a pretty whole food centered uh, diet that's not super difficult but if you eat a lot of prepared foods packaged foods um all of a sudden that sugar starts adding up so um it's just something to be very mindful of and pay attention to sorry i can't click my slide and talk at the same time <laughs> so sugar is a problem for a lot of reasons but one of the main reasons is just it leads to inflammation and then inflammation uh, can cause all these other things. Um, so we've got obesity, diabetes, gingivitis, cardiovascular disease, eye disorders, um, joint pain. The joint pain is one, I see that a lot um, when people start cleaning up their diet, all of a sudden they're, and this me included, when my diet is on point, I have much less joint, joint aches and pains. Um, but then when I've been eating a little off plan or having some alcohol, all of a sudden it's like, oh, why are my knees so achy? So that's definitely something that's overlooked. I think um, we like to blame all of our aches and pains on our activity, but it, that's just not the case a lot of time. Uh, metabolic syndrome, that's the one that is like for us as CrossFit coaches, that's like what we're trying to fight all the time between exercise and diet, um, because this leads to so many other issues. Um, Arthritis, Alzheimer's disease, asthma and allergies, and ulcerative colitis. Um, like I actually have personal um, family history with all of these things. And I don't doubt for a second that it's all, you know, high, like the sugar in their diets is, was, a, was a high contributing factor. So maybe not the whole story, but it didn't help matters at all. Um, so all the cells in our body use glucose for energy, including cancer cells. Um, that's why a lot of times you'll hear people talk about a keto diet as treatment um, protocol for, for cancer. A lot, of, a lot of doctors don't really 
like to do that, but it's been shown to work pretty well for certain cancers. I'm not saying to go do that. I'm just saying there's a lot of research out there on it. So, um, you know, something to keep in mind. Um, but obesity, obviously sugar intake and obesity, obesity are linked and obesity is uh, a factor in many of these diseases. And it's kind of sad because it's generally going to be preventable. So, you know, watching your sugar intake and making sure you're not having too much is, um, is important. And then one of the things that's come around the last few years is we've kind of been duped into thinking that, um, you know, we know white sugar is bad, but it's okay if it comes in honey form or agave or molasses or whatever. And, and while those are going to have more nutrients in them, it's still sugar. So quantity matters. You know, if we have a little bit of honey every day, is that going to be the end of the world? No, but we can't just like load everything up and, and have this constant intake of even these natural sugars um, and think there's not going to be a consequence or, or worse, think we're actually doing something healthy for ourselves. Um, do you have anything to add on that or? No, I mean, sugar growth and it comes from a healthier side or not, but it's not saying that you can't have that, that one Reese thin after a meal or something like that. It's saying that you, there has to be some kind of moderation in there. Um, because uh, especially like this slide, like the inflammation leads to all these other things. And that's why we, especially us as women, we get that like fluffy feeling, like we're almost like inflamed and it's because what we put in is what we're going to get out. So if you're putting that in there and then you're coming to the gym or you're going on your walk or whatever, it's, you're not going to get the, the energy spent that you could have if you were putting it, like if you were putting, we'll say healthy sugars in your body, like sugars that come from like bananas or anything like that. Uh, your body's going to use it in the way that it needs to, and it's not going to use those bad, quote unquote, sugars the way that it would use a healthier sugar. But at the same time, you still have to keep it in moderation. Yep. Any questions so far, Missy? Nope. I'm good. Cool. All right. Moving on right along. All right. <laughs> so this is like a really important thing for me to point out, um, this is a, the nutrition facts label. And so often all we pay attention to is like, maybe, the, maybe the fat or maybe the carbs. Um, if we even pay attention to any of this at all, <laughs> but honestly, it's all really good information. Um, and you can look, these two look the same. A lot of people will only pay attention to the calories. Um, but they look almost the same, right? 230 calories, 230 calories, eight grams of fat, eight grams of fat, 37 carbs, 37 carbs, and then three grams of protein. Okay. Now what, what's not on this one here is the fact that there's on this other one, there's 10 grams of added sugar. So out of that 37 grams of carbs, there's 10 grams of sugar didn't naturally occur in whatever food this is. Um, the other thing I like to point out is the serving size. So let's say this is cereal. The serving size is two thirds of a cup. How many of us measure out our cereal when we pour a cup or when we pour a bowl? A lot of us don't. And, and if we were to do that, most of the time we're gonna find that maybe we're at double this, if not more. Um, so then we have to double this down here, right? So now we're already, if, if we had two servings of cereal, we've now had 20 grams of added sugar, uh, close to 80 grams of total carbs. And this is just at breakfast and that sugar total doesn't even count our milk that we put on it. Um, and so we've already hit our max at breakfast, uh, our max sugar intake for the day um, and had a ton of carbs. So always pay attention to the serving size. Look at how many carbs are in that serving. Look at how many added sugars are in that and go from there. Um, it's, it's really hard for people to understand kind of the difference between um, you know, looking at something that says heart healthy, or, you know, it, it'll use those bu buzzwords to make you feel like it's, it's healthy, but we have to learn to just flip it over. Oh, we got somebody trying again. Let's see. 
So just be mindful as you're reading those labels. Um, it's asking me about playing music. I'm not trying to play music. Um, anyway, top three foods with hidden sugars. So this is always kind of fun. Um, if, if we start reading our labels, sometimes we're going to be shocked at what we find um, with, with our sugar intake. Um, three most common places for hidden sugar are going to be, oh, see, now I can't even get it to change when I wanted to. There we go. Uh, breakfast foods and like snack bars, yogurts, those are and, and like creamer. These are all really common places that are loaded with sugar, but, but we feel like they're healthy, right? Um, so for instance, like these are oatmeal packets, Quaker oatmeal packets. When you get these individual instant oats, a lot of times they are just loaded up with sugar. Um, you know, 12 grams of added sugar in addition to all the carbs in the oats. That's that's a lot. Pop tarts. Um, it's got that buzzword there, whole grain, right? That makes people feel like it's healthy. Um, one package of those is 30 grams of sugar. Um, that's a lot of sugar at one time. And that's what people are like giving to their kids and sending them off to school with. And um, if there's one thing we could stop doing, that would be a great thing. <laughs> stop sending our kids off with sugar to start their day. Um, the, hey, the Melissa, yogurt. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. Speaking no. of that, and um, we can talk about this later um, if you want to, but that's the hardest thing is trying to find something fast for your kids that is healthy. Mm -hmm. So do you have suggestions for that? Yes. Because so the world is picky, picky, picky. Right. Um, now, one thing to remember, especially with kids, but it goes for adults too, is they need to try something like 10 to 15 times before they really know whether or not they like it. Now, that doesn't mean force feed them 10 to 15 times. That means, you know, kind of as a family, it helps to adopt a habit of trying stuff, right? So if you make something for dinner, if you make something for breakfast, you know, have the things you know they'll eat, but then have a little serving of something that they you want them to try and, you know, encourage them to take a couple of bites. And the one thing that helped me um, with my children was number one, they always saw us eating it. And, you know, I didn't always go and make a totally separate meal. It's like, this is what we got. That if you're hungry, this is what you get to eat. Um, but the other one was once my son got to be a little older, your son is a little young for this right now, um, but it's not too early to start talking about it. But once he got a little older, um, an example I'll give is guacamole. Like he does, he doesn't like guacamole. And so a couple of years ago, I was like, well, when was the last time you tried guacamole? So, you know, just, I like to talk about that, how our taste buds change over time. And as we get older, we like different things. Um, you know, all that kind of stuff. And every now and then he'll, he'll try it again. And, and I think the key is to not make it a big deal if they don't like something, just, you know, if they try it, they don't care for it. That's all right. Um, and then the other thing I've learned, I really need to work on is teaching them how to, um, express their dislike or, you know, less, less than, than love for certain foods in a, way that is has like some manners but but yeah just making sure that they always have the opportunity to try stuff making sure that you model that as well um like i i'm really bad about anything if it came out of the water i don't like it and um so that's that's something i've seen kind of passed on to my kids like you know, just that stubbornness of, of not like, oh no, if that comes out of the water, I don't like it. So just trying to be open-minded, especially when they're around and say, oh, I want to try that. I want to see how that tastes or whatever. And then, and then talking more about more than just the taste, but what, what it's good for, like kids, especially if, when you tell them there's nutrients in there that are going to help them build strong muscles, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes that helps them to be more willing to try it. Um, so, but the, the best thing is just be consistent with having them try new things and slowly get them off of those sugary things. Um, 
almost every time if it's marketed towards kids, it's going to be loaded with sugar. So yeah. like this, the yogurts that are marketed towards kids, I'm sure there probably is a decent one, but just, I mean, that's like an easy switch. Um, you know, if they're attached to it, it's probably more just the character on the package than the actual taste of it. So, you know, that one's an easy one to start to, just to start sliding the other way. Um, mm-hmm. But, and, and like with my kids, we just didn't buy, like, I didn't buy sugary cereals. Like, I mean, every now and then maybe I would like on a whim, but that was like a dessert cereal. They didn't get to eat that to start their day. Um, you know, so th- those mm-hmm. are just kind of things like just kind of set the, the tone. And of course, at first they're going to protest because that's just what they do. Um, but be consistent. Don't make it a punishment. Um, encourage them to keep an open mind. Encourage them to try new things. Never force feed them. <laughs> You yeah. know, just all those things. And, and it's, it's a work in progress and it will always be, uh, my son's 13, almost 14. And, you know, we still, sometimes I just let him eat macaroni and cheese for dinner, but now he has to make it himself. Like I, I never made it separately for him, but now that he can make it, I'm like, all right, you can have that, but you gotta have some protein too. Um, Another so. good thing is, uh, try it in different ways. Like, Going back to the whole guacamole thing, like I have tried avocado in so many different ways, and I'm because I know that it's it's a good fat, and I'm just like I can't do it. I've tried it every way, but if you make it in some guacamole, I can eat it all day. Mm-hmm. So it's like some things you have to just try in different ways. If you have like the yogurt thing, and you get like a plain yogurt or whatever, uh, maybe put in like their kind of favorite fruits that they like, or you know different things that that make them see that it can be eaten many different ways and it can taste many different ways. It's not just a one size fits all, um, you know, here it is. Or like, if you do have to hand out the the pop tarts, maybe, Hey, this morning eat one pop tart and you're going to also eat this to, to balance it out. It's all, it's always about balance. It's not about necessarily having to take everything away cold turkey because we wouldn't do that to ourselves either. So it's just about, like she said, taking a little way at a time and supplement it for something else to show them that like, oh, this can be your new favorite thing on the go or, you know, things like that. Yeah. And we, we do make Andrew try, like, especially at dinner time, like we make him try whatever it is that we're eating. Um, and then for lunch, you know, it's pretty easy to pack him right now. You know, I pack him what I want him to have and that's all he gets, but it's really breakfast where we struggle because usually we're in a hurry and yeah. we're out the door. And so he was super addicted to those little mini muffins that come in the little packet. Y'all seen those? Oh my gosh. Like he threw so many fits. I finally got him out off of those. Um, but it's like, those are the mini donuts, you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah. you know, we can't have that every single morning, but he'll get like stuck on something and that's all he'll want. And so I've mm-hmm. gotten to the point where now I'm like, okay, kid, you're going to go hungry until you're hungry <laughs> and then you'll yeah. eat what I give you, you know? So, um, and, but- and that's fine too. Like I know sometimes parents freak if their kid, you know, especially if, if they're like me, I was a stubborn child, still am. Um, and if, if I didn't want what we're having then I wasn't going to eat it. And some parents are like super concerned about that, but it's, it'll, it'll correct itself <laughs> as long as you don't make a big deal out of it, you know, like they'll eat when they get hungry and, and it'll be okay. Um, some of the good, like, especially if you end up finding he's, he's having his breakfast, like in the car, like I used to do this with my kids a lot. Um, just finding some of those things that are easy to eat on the go, like, like a little bowl with some fruit in it. Um, you can put, put like blueberries and strawberries and, and, um, some some nuts or something or some like string cheese uh both of my kids ate a lot of string cheese <laughs> as kids so at least they're getting some some nutrients and some protein you know that kind of thing and then you know if they also have a little sweet thing on in addition not the end of the world so going on maybe we'll see can you see my next slide Yes, I can. Okay, good. <laughs> so sugar alternatives. We kind of touched on the fact that a lot of times we go to um, like honey, agave, like maple syrup, that kind of stuff as as a 
quote unquote healthier sugar. And like, while they do have more nutritious properties than your typical sugar, they're still sugar. So um, I don't want to say they're like bad, but we have to be mindful of how much we're having. But cinnamon, applesauce and coconut um, are all really good options to kind of use when you're baking, especially um, cinnamon is supposed to kind of trigger the same taste buds as sugar, um, but it's actually pretty good for you. And it can also help regulate your glucose. Um, your uh, applesauce, like I think we have a couple of recipes on our website that use applesauce to cook. It's pretty, it's pretty good. And it, it keeps it kind of thick with a little bit of sweet, but not a ton. But of course, we also want to make sure we read our label and get an applesauce that does not have sugar added to it. <laughs> um, and then coconut, like sh shredded coconut is a good option as well. Um, just make sure you get it unsweetened. Because like everything, all, all three of these you can find um, if you buy a jar of, of already ground cinnamon, <laughs> a lot of times it's already mixed with sugar. So don't get that one. Don't get sweetened applesauce and don't get sweetened coconut. So those are a couple of easy alternatives and it's kind of fun to experiment um with with different ways of using those items healthy treats um i personally love to have a little like square or whatever of dark chocolate as a little treat i mean it's still is it the healthiest no but it's still pretty it's good and it'll kind of get that craving there Sat taken care of without being overly sweet. Um, and I, I'm, when I say dark chocolate, I'm talking like, um, you know, 70 something, 80 something percent, whatever it is. Um, but the, the thing here is like the more sweets we have, even artificial sweetener, the more triggering that sweet tooth all the time. And so if you're trying to break yourself of your sugar addiction, Sometimes we just got to like, just really be mindful and, and like really moderate how much we have. Like maybe you get one sweet thing at the end of the night after dinner. Maybe we try and just have one dessert a week, something like that. So that it's, um, it's limited, but some, some options for healthy treats are like uh, fresh or frozen or dehydrated fruit. I would caution you on the dehydrated fruit that adds up quick. Um, you know, we can easily go through a bunch of like dried fruit things, um, you know, and trail mix type stuff, but the sugar in those, like, it seems like it's small, but it's really just kind of condensed. So those can add up pretty fast. Um, you can make like a peanut butter and banana and ice cream, basically freeze a banana, mash it up with some peanut butter and then eat it that way. It's pretty good. Um, you can do low sugar Greek yogurt with chocolate chips or granola. And, and actually one of my like super favorite um, desserts is uh, I'll get the Oikos triple zero chocolate yogurt if you can find it, but it's Greek yogurt and it's, it's got a little bit of a sweet taste with stevia. Um, I'll add a little bit of peanut butter and a little bit of the like fair life or enjoy life. That's what it is. Enjoy life chocolate chips to it. Um, mix it up and it's just kind of like a super yummy chocolatey tasting thing. <laughs> but again, that can just keep you craving the sweets. So a little here and there, but it's, it's high in protein. doesn't have a lot of sugar. The peanut butter adds some healthy fats to it. So, um, so it's a nice little option there. I'll also do it. They have a lemon one, a lemon flavored yogurt, and it's super good. Um, I'll put a scoop of vanilla collagen powder in that and then um, some either some sliced almonds or I have some paleo granola that's like cinnamon flavored and then it kind of just reminds me of like a lemon pie so I don't know those are those are kind of tasty options little treats there um, we have a few on our website we have like a chocolate chip protein cookie um, dark chocolate avocado truffles which are supposed to be really good I just haven't made them yet um, mini baked apple crumble I have made that one up a few times it's super simple and if you're like me and really like um like baked apples and, and cinnamon and, and that kind of thing that's a yummy option um, and then there's protein packed cookie dough bites and all of those options you can use um i know missy you've got uh i think you've got the driven protein but you can use those proteins uh the protein powder to make those so it's pretty yummy um do you have any do you have any healthy treats that you that you enjoy I'm trying to think. Um, 
I mean, I also love dark chocolate. Um, I get the Lily's dark chocolate bars. Yes, yeah. Have, yeah. Like a strip or something of it as like a treat. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, I've really just been trying to, because I have a sweet tooth um, that's rather ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I've just been trying to not have. So yeah. I'll have berries, you know, or things, uh -huh. but I, I'm not a big strawberry fan. And so I have like blackberries, blueberries, and raspberries. Like those are the berries I eat. Um, and so sometimes for breakfast or something, I'll get, I'll put those in my granola, my yogurt or, you know, mm -hmm. something. Um, and that kind of helps or like yeah. an orange or blood orange or something like that. So um, yeah. awesome. I'm just trying to, to, to really limit mine. <laughs> so yeah, well, that's really, um, that's good. And, and I think it's good for you to know if, um, you know, if, if that's something that you need to be aware of and like, you know, if sugar is a problem for you, it's like my husband, he, once he has a little, it's like, it just flips a switch and he just keeps, he can't stop thinking about it. Um, so he either needs a plan of, okay, this is my sweet and this is when I get it, <laughs> or he just needs to stay away from it altogether. Um, mm -hmm. So some people can kind of just go here and there and, you know, I'll go for a few weeks without having anything. And then one day I'm like, you know what, I'd like a little piece of chocolate today or whatever, you know, and again, it, it, it'll, how strict you need to be with that will depend on your goals and your unique situation and, um, you know, that kind of stuff too, but just it's, it's, it's different for everybody, but there's, you know, little, um, helpful tools out there that we can all use that, that may or may not help you kind of move forward with that. What do you, you have anything to add? No. Oh, I, another, another good one is if you're, if you're, because you're an ice cream girl, I'm an ice cream girl too. Uh, you know those, uh, they're like Yasa bars or mm, yeah. Well, uh, there's some that are just the vanilla Greek yogurt and it's covered in like a very thin, crunchy chocolate. <laughs> But they're not bad. Like I've looked at the ingredients list, I've looked at the sugars on them, and things like that. So like, I, I'm like you. I, I could eat ice cream every day after every meal if I could do it. And it's one of those things where it's like, I'll tell myself, you know, hey, this pack comes with four bars. Uh, this needs to last me, you know, however long. Um, and once they're gone, they're gone. And that's like that's a good thing with your kids too. Like, hey, I bought this, but once they're gone, they're gone. I'm not buying anymore for this amount of time. So it, it works because it's like, well, they're unsure if they want to keep eating it because once it's gone, it's gone and it's not going to be there anymore for them to, you know, have as like a treat to themselves. But again, it just comes down to balance, really. It, it's okay to have that piece of dark chocolate if you want it every once in a while because you have to remember that you're eating all these whole foods and all this great stuff for your body and that one piece of dark chocolate is not going to slow down your progress of what's going on and and you don't want to ever feel guilty about it either it should be one of those things where it's like if you eat that piece of dark chocolate you're like yeah i can eat this piece of dark chocolate that's not a big deal at all whereas like you have people who who get super guilty about having that one piece of sweet and that's just that's where you're drawing that line of like all right well you know there's more to this than just a sweet tooth so that's my yep. take on it yep and, and like you said, the balance is the key there. Like if you find like, like it's just one piece of dark chocolate, but you know, you've said that five times in the last hour, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a little different than once a day or whatever. So um, just being mindful of, of your overall situation is, is huge. And like keeping in mind, like as long as you're eating all those healthy nutrient dense foods, like Brittany talked about, you know, a little sweet here and there isn't going to be the end of the world. Your body's going to be getting what it needs and it may not even crave those sweets as much when you're eating all those good, healthy foods. So cool. Well, if you don't have any other questions, we will wrap it up. And sorry about the interruption in the middle of it. I'm good. Yep. All right. Thanks, yeah. It was nice to meet you, Missy. Nice to meet you too. All right. We will see you uh, in the future. Okay, bye. Have a good weekend. Bye.